And if there's one thing that I absolutely adore, and it's a good magic act. And joining me now is one of Australia's top magicians. Would we say good morning to Scott Williams? Scott, hi. Very good to be here, Rhonda. Yeah, I'm no. looking forward to having some exciting moments with you over the next couple of minutes. <laughs> I'm scared. First of all, before we get on to some things, um, how difficult is it for a young professional magician to exist in Australia or make a good living out of the business? Uh, I think it can be very difficult. Uh, many, many people have a, a, a strange build-up in their mind of, of how they picture a magician. Today, when a magician is introduced, quite often the hardest element you have to overcome is the, the feeling of, oh, no, not another magician, yeah. because there are so many out there that are doing the same thing, presenting the same tricks, not so much the illusions I'm talking about, which can be often seen time and time again and, and still amazed, but the scarves and the rabbits and the silks <laughs> and everything else. Right. Uh, and so I determined to sort of steer away from that a little bit and uh, mix it with humour and comedy and, of course, a lot of audience participation. And uh, so... From my point of view, it's been very successful. It has, too. So it's really a matter of sort of being different to perhaps the run-of-the-mill magicians. That's right, and I think that comes down to life generally. I mean, to be a little bit different, to be a little bit outstanding in the television game or whatever, sure. you stand out in the crowd, so to speak. Secret of success. You mentioned illusions. Let's just clear up. What is the difference between an illusionist and a magician? Is there any? Uh, well, you can have a, uh, a magician who's also an illusionist or an illusionist who's also a magician, but I guess in most people's minds, an illusionist is the one who is performing the larger illusions of putting the swords through the woman. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And the other, the magician is perhaps uh, often recognised as perhaps the, the close-up artist, the one who's doing the coins and the sleight of right. hand or the billiard balls as the amazing Mr. Rooklyn used to do. Right. Uh, so, but it is a fine line because magicians often get into both. Mm. Now you mentioned before the importance of, uh, in your case, combining comedy with magic. There's also, is it a new wave or a new thing of magicians that don't talk at all? You know, they just have music behind them. Yeah, dramatic. That sort of Dr thing. There, yeah. Yes, there, there, are, there are some, these were adapted from uh, a few years ago. Uh, when magicians did in fact do uh, a bit of silent work and have dramatic build-up music to it. And I think today, uh, especially in places like Las Vegas with Siegfried and Roy, uh, yeah. they do both. They do a, a bit of talking, but the only time you can do that is when you do really have a dramatic effect because otherwise it's the talking element that keeps the presentation yeah, going. Of course. Uh, otherwise, if you're about to vanish a motorcycle, for example, like I used to do down at the Magic Castle yeah. here on the coast, um, what I did was get up there and have music, dramatic music, uh, build up to a crescendo and then psh, yeah. I'd vanish and oh, I was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Scott, why is it that in America or in England where sight acts are, are well known, whereas in Australia that's not so much the case, is it? We tend to know our top singers and, and comedians, but sight acts are not name acts. Oh, yes, I don't, I really, um, I don't think we've reached that stage yet. When I say I don't think we've reached that stage, I don't think we've had, um, the sign acts have had quite the acceptance that they have had over in the States, mainly because there aren't that many of them. Mm. There aren't that many professional magicians that are working constantly, that are making a good living out of it, that are also working on return seasons. I mean, they might appear once, but then they don't normally go back to the same place again. Sure. And they burn out eventually. Yeah. But there aren't many magicians that are working, that are going back to the same places, you know, year after year. Mm. Uh, and I think this is something that builds up to, uh, you know, a top line act. That's right, and being established. Mm. All right, well, I've tried to delay the evil moment as long as I can. Now, You've brought some things along. in over excellent to you. hands. You really are. You don't have anything to worry I'm in about. in excellent health at this stage, too. Tell me, um, you know, I, don't, I want to assure you, first of all, that there's very little chance... <laughs> of an accident, okay? But, but um, let me ask you something. Um, I don't know whether you've ever read um, the book of Matthew. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Right, well, the book of Matthew in the New Testament has this, uh, among other things, has a, a, a verse in there that says that if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. Now, this has many connotations, the mm -hmm. least of which is actually, of course, chopping off your hand, but there was a time between when that was written and today mm. when people did actually take it literally. And if somebody stole something, for example, they weren't just reprimanded, but they had their hand taken off. I now, haven't done anything wrong, though. No, I know you haven't. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just wanting to invite you to have a bit of a look here because mm. I have a replica of what the actual little uh, uh, 
uh, shop job did. <laughs> These right. sat on the side counter, and if any child or anything was caught stealing, then, and boys and girls, I'd like you to watch this if you are watching, because uh, just think that this could have happened to you in the early days. What we have here is a, a basic uh, shell of a piece of wood with a blade in the middle of it. Now, what we're going to attempt to do, mm. that goes in there, mm. and it comes straight down like that, right. all right? right? Now, to show you, uh, naturally, in this day and age, we can't actually take somebody's hand off because, I mean, you right. go to jail for that. <laughs> yes. But what I would like to do is just demonstrate, with the use of a couple of carrots here, mm. just the, the force, the potential that a trick of this nature has when you're looking at, for example, if that was your hand or yes. perhaps somebody's thumb, for example. I'm imagining it. The mm. blade would go in there and mm. would come down and, of course, come to rest on the carrot, okay. okay? In this case, then, we'd ask you, is there any reason why you feel that you shouldn't have your hand removed? And, of course, they'd say, well, I didn't do anything, but, of course, they were caught stealing, so that was no excuse. So then the, the owner of the shop would simply oh, go like that. I felt it just there. <laughs> Did you? Yes. Would go like that and, of course, leave the carrot, as you can see, in, uh, in a, a state that is rather unusual. Nice clean cut, though. Yes, a nice clean cut. Now, as I said, we can't really show what a person looks like actually getting their hand. But Rhonda, no. I wonder whether you'd mind, for the viewers, of course, for the viewers, All in the I just want you to just take, take, uh, take, give me a hand, just yeah. remove the watch, right. okay? Right. I, you know, my wife will like that. <laughs> you'll, you'll, have, you'll, you'll have no use for it. And, and just sit that in there, okay? Oh, sit that in there because pop it in, in there. That's the girl. Because that's just what... Look at that. That's just what a person would look like about to lose a hand. Now, as I said, we can't actually demonstrate this, but what I would like to do is just build it up all the way mm. because we're also going to take this white cloth, or, or it, it was, was white. It, it, I've done this trick a couple of times. And, and just do, do this up around here. This is mm. for no other reason except just to sort of soak up any, uh, uh, you know, excess spillage that we might have just in case this doesn't work. Not that it, it, it's not going to work, but there is that slight chance. Now, mm. perhaps... I'll also just pop underneath there another little carrot, okay? <laughs> now, I'm well, you, ready, I'm ready. you did say before the show that you'd give me a hand. Now, I want you to watch again because we're going to take the blade right. and we're going to bring the blade down in here and push it back down and come, first of all, just to rest on your hand, okay? Now, we're not... You, look, please, I want you to relax. You don't... Well, I'll tell you what, relax. we'll do this quickly and get it out of the way. Right. Are you ready? Yes. We'll bring it down. Right. I don't want you to move. <laughs> okay, we may as well take this all the way. Are you ready, yes. Rhonda? One, two, three! Now, wow, amazing. Now, I'm stealing one piece. You are stealing one piece. Oh, Wait a minute, let me just get this out of the way. I'll take that out of there. Just remove your hand again and just... Yes, it did cut the carrot, but as you can see, it is still in oh, one piece, you see? Goodness, so I don't believe you. That is what you would call perhaps a mini illusion because it did pass through your Ooh. hand and le yet you're left with we everything in one all piece. There, except my watch. Uh, uh. Yes, I made that disappear. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I can't, unfortunately, bring it back. <laughs> I mean, it is a very expensive well, watch. I'll, 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 I'll see like you Have you seen that, that trick where they, they smash the watch? And no, no, listen, you, I'll have the watch back. While I'm putting that on, you've got another one. All right, one other quick one about. before we go, especially yeah. for the viewers and for yourself. Right. I've got here... <laughs> Now, this, once again, is a rather dangerous effect. Mm. I, I've I not so tried scared. it before, but I did promise you that we'd come up with something a little bit different for right. you. Now, I have here a target, and on the front of the target, there's a little stand, and I have a deck of cards. Now, I wonder, we'll just have a look at that and make sure that all the cards are, in fact, different cards, okay? It's a packet of Queen Slipper playing cards. It sells for about $2.45 <laughs> in your local newsagents. Now, that's all right. There's no sponsorship right. by Queen Slipper. No. Now, what I want you to do is do me a favour and mm -hmm. take any card. Right. Take a card. Look, look at, at it. it. Yes, yep. look at it. Yep. Okay? Yeah. I want you to remember that card and right. then take it and put it back up on top. Okay. I want you to lose that card in that deck. The best way to do it is to give them a cut. Right. Cut the deck. That's it. Put them back on top. Yeah. Cut them again for me if you right. like. Mix them up well and good. That's right. Yeah. Cut them again if you want to. Mm -hmm. Just so... That's right. Just so that they're totally right. mixed up. Yeah. Now, here's what we're going to do. I am going to take this and I am going to give them another cut. That's not your card? No, that's not. Okay, and the bottom card isn't your card? No. Just in case you don't trust me. Right. What we're going to do here is try something a bit different because I'll pop that back down there, right. the king there that I just showed you, because I am going to take the deck, if you will, if I can just get up for just a moment, yeah. and 
I'm going to place the deck down here on this little hoolet area there, okay? Yeah. Now, I want you to think of the card that you've selected, all right? I want mm. you to think of the card you've selected. Now, the best way to find this, being a magician, I have here a rifle. Oh. Now, please don't worry. Right. No, I've if, got over if anything now. happens, <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> I am going to move down here, and Rhonda, I will ask you, if you don't mind, <clears throat> just to concentrate on the card that you have selected. Concentrate. Right. And I wonder whether you can, in fact, tell us what was your card? Tell you now? Yes. The card I chose was the Six of Spades. And somewhere in that deck there is the Six of Spades. And with the help of my trusty rifle, I'd like to try and see if I can find your card. I will ask everybody to watch because there are various ways a magician can find a card. We are looking for the Six of Spades. Now, I'm a bit shaky here, so be a bit careful, Rhonda. <laughs> The Six of Spades. My goodness gracious. That's fantastic, Scott. Thank you. That is unbelievable. Sit back down. I, I, I'd love to ask you how you did it, but I know you're not going to tell me. Ah, the magic's a secret. It is. Look, it's been fabulous having you with us. Unfortunately, we are out of time. You're Thank working you at the moment me. in Brisbane. It's just been unbelievable. I'm, I'm, I am not joking. I was really scared when I had my hand in oh, there. Look, wait till we do the soaring in half. <laughs> so if I've got to be quiet, everybody, truly, I'm recovering. Lovely to talk to you, Scott, and, and uh, we'll definitely have you back. But thanks for your time today. Thank you, Rhonda.